previously on Dungeon Breaker. It's not a they're, brawl in the middle. Before I leave, can I use Fematogy again and just basically mimic a paladin's voice calling someone else something very offensive? Yes, yes, uh, you can. I'd like to do the same thing in a different voice with my minor illusion. So it sounds like two people are sort of like forming factions on either side of the bar brawl. Oh, wow. <laughs> the seemingly docile man who was ladling out soup roars and flips the entire table. This table is about 30 foot long. It's like a repurposed old banqueting table. Uh, and there's a tidal wave of stew goes across the floor. He is already running to the source of um, this insult about his cooking. Uh, and he just clotheslines this, uh, this hulking paladin, whom he assumed to be the culprit. I would now like to, uh, and hopefully you guys are joining me, sprint up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you realise you hear the tramping of like a bunch of um, like bum, 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 bunch of boots on the stone, and uh, there emerges uh, eight guards. Basically, these are paladins, but their armour is so it somehow has greater presence than the normal stuff in the mess room. These are a higher level of paladin, and they are being led by a captain who has a, a helmet tucked under his arm and he runs down. He stops you all. He goes, like, he holds up a hand to his cohort and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? We came for backup, of course. There's a, there's a brawl. There's a riot in the mess hall. We know that's where we're going. Now you've called us. You can turn around and go back in. Uh, I turn around and sprint back down. <laughs> yes, I just I just need to tie my uh, boot laces, so I'll be one second. <laughs> Paladin, you know you have no business on the higher level. We cannot let you pass. Oh, no, I, I of course mean not to go upstairs. I merely need to, to wait and tie my boot laces. I cast Minor Illusion, so it looks like my boot is untied. <laughs> Paladin, you can tie it when you get back to the mess hall. Very well, but if I trip, then... <laughs> sure. Um, so are you gonna... Are you gonna go back down with uh, them, or...? Morboss would like to... to say, um... I have, uh, information for Justinian. It's beyond your pay grade. Just let us through. Uh, because obviously I'm a, a tiefling, so I'm out of the ordinary. And so I want to imply that I'm on some kind of secret task that normal paladins, you know, not at my level, um, w wouldn't know about. Okay. Um, fine. Uh, make me a charisma persuasion check. Yes. The, <laughs> the only skill I get plus five in. <laughs> I rolled a 15 plus five is 20. Hey! hey! Um, he looks you up and down and he goes, very well. Uh, Report to the orderly at the top of the ramp. He will see you from there. Great. Then I hit him in the face for mace. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you are all roughly shouldered out of the way as they go. Bum, 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 bum. The noise from the uh, the mess hall is not abating. Indeed, it gets louder as they go down, and uh, the, <laughs> all of these patterns give a roar and charge. It seems like <laughs> while. You, I mean, if you were in that mess hall fighting and you saw them, you'd probably stop because their presence is commanding. However, it seems like they're not giving anyone in the mess hall the chance to surrender <laughs> without a damn good clubbering first. They're going to break it up by sheer force of will and indeed force. But never mind, you get past them and you go up. One sec, sorry. Are we now alone in the stairwell? Yes. I would like to cast a new disguise self, disguising myself as the main man who just spoke to us. That man? Yes. Very good. All right. Yes. A lot that... of spell slots. Oh, wait. Well, I had two and then we had a short rest. So I got one back as a wizard. Yeah. Okay. Plus that ori original one was probably running out soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, fine. Yes. You look like uh, that man. Whose name you do uh, not whose know. Whose name I obviously know. <laughs> you do not know his name. Um, I, by the way, because obviously I had run back downstairs, but then I think yes. I got down to the bottom and I was looking around and I noticed that none of my friends joined me and then I saw those guards run past me. So I was just like, oh, okay. And I run back up the stairs. <laughs> okay. We, we, then we're just going to let that happen. <laughs> Fine. Um, okay. Yeah, cool. So you get to the top and there is a... Um, 
there is a, basically you just come into a, a, a holding room where there is a man uh, dressed in similar armor behind uh, a very heavy wooden desk. And he says, uh, yeah, Captain Scipio, I didn't expect you back so soon. Brother, it is much worse down there than we thought. I must speak with Justinian at once. Uh, forgive me, Captain. What does a cardinal have to do with a brawl in a mess hall? How often do you ask questions of your superiors? It is quite literally my duty, sir. As well you know, <laughs> he who sits behind the desk may ask questions of anyone if it is in the interests of the secure running of the Cathedral of the Silver Flame. I'd like to hunker down behind the desk and go, um... <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> so, so what's your name, then? Because like, because I'm behind the desk, I reckon I can ask questions, sir. Uh, I'm kind uh, of like, I'm kind of like this on the desk, like... <laughs> so you have you gone behind the desk to his side? Yeah, and just kind of hunkered down beside him and gone like, so what's your name? Yeah, he backhands you. Um... <laughs> Uh, you're going to take one point of damage um because you're you're dressed as a regular paladin anyway it's like do not presume to even come close to my level um because um, oh, no, I, I mean i think he means like the level that he's sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I just kind of like, I don't know, I just sit on the floor next to him and go, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to. <sighs> Captain, if you insist on maintaining this course of action, I will permit you to go through and question, well, not question, petition <sighs> Justinian's personal secretary. However, I should warn you, he is deep in his cups and he has made heavy losses this morning, this morning in, in his gaming. So tread wisely. I slam cautiously. my fist on the table and say, there is no time to talk to a secretary. I need Justinian now. And if you lay another hand on my personal friends, then I will make sure that your job is on the forfeit. Um, okay, make, try and make me an intimidation check. Okay, let's. I've got plus zero on this one, so let's see how this goes. Uh, that's a sixteen. It's not bad. Uh, it is not enough. Oh, oh well. I'm sorry. Uh, it says number one. You know well, Captain, that I do not have the authority to convey you directly to a cardinal. Secondly, it reflects very poorly on your station that you should be consorting with these types. Uh, I would like to cast Minor Illusion from the stairwell. Okay. Um, and I want the sound of a paladin screaming, Oh, God, my eyes! <laughs> okay. Uh, and I will shout at him and say, Does this seem like the time to bring protocol into this? He, oh, he <laughs> holds for a few seconds. He's like, Fine, go see the secretary. Um, and he turns uh, and he sort of has to scuttle away from his desk. He's clearly going to try and fetch more backup for the mess hall situation. Okay. Um, so you are free to leave that room and uh, and and kind of go along the. Uh, this is the barracks of the cardinals' guards and the elite paladins, basically. So. All right. Um, basically, you, you imagine there's a long corridor um, and all of the doors stand open. In some of them, there are men just sort of polishing armor. Others are sort of reclining, uh, you know, on their, their bunks, reading books. Uh, many of them are, are deep in prayer um, at little personal altars in, in their little cloistered cells. Um, but then as you sort of proceed down the corridor, uh, attracting no shortage of strange looks, I might add, um, you hear a slightly more raucous room where people are laughing and joking and uh, the air is thick with the scent of wine. And um, you hear a man going, oh, no, come on, one more hand. Uh, and you hear sort of another one say, no, no, I think you've lost quite enough today, haven't you, sir? Uh, well, it would be churlish of us 
to take you for anything more. And you hear them, I go, no, please, come on. At least give me the chance to regain some of the stuff I've lost. Um, can I look up, uh, well, Tim, can Tim look up at Amelia and go, I think I might have a plan if there ever needs to be some sort of distraction. <laughs> okay, Amelia's like, go, go on. Well, I could cause a ruckus that may force the Cardinal Secretary to stop his gambling and come and talk to our friends here. I see. But Um, it will require me to not be in this armour anymore. Okay, well, if you think it's a good idea, then um, I suppose I can't stop you. Uh, Tim's going to nod enthusiastically. He's going to turn to the other and say, when the Cardinal comes out, if he comes out, actually, in fact, when as soon as I rush in, you guys come in and I suggest maybe you take things from there. Yeah, you, you've done so well so far. I believe in you. I'm like, thank you. Okay. And uh, Tim, oh. Yeah, no, carry on. Tim's going to take off his armour, stow it neatly on the floor, uh, and then he's going to transform into a pig. <laughs> a very s- a small pig. <laughs> a micro pig. <laughs> okay, yeah. And you're going to run in as a pig. Uh, he's going to burst through the door as a pig, yeah. And start Perfect. squealing incredibly loudly. Um, if only I had grease. <laughs> <laughs> grease the pig. Amelia's going to just lo- lock eyes with more boss and be like, oh, this is happening. So, Tim the Goblin, as a pig, you you burst round the corner and into this room, going, you know, just squealing uh, yeah. like like a little pig. Yeah. Um, you see a, a table with uh, four men, sort of, uh, who are clearly part of this elite powers in guard. Um, their their uniforms are like half doffed. They're not wearing any of their. Um, their breastplates or anything they're clearly off duty and in what passes for civilian clothing with them um and you see one man wearing sort of a very fine uh robe um that's richly embroidered uh but he is looking slightly worse for wear like it's it's obvious that a lot of wine has been drunk in this room but uh he seems to be weathering it less well than anyone else he is um he's very red in his face his hair is kind of like sticking up at odd angles he's also oh. seems quite stressed um because as you heard from outside he has lost quite a lot of money um but as you burst in one of the paladins goes oh pig uh, and another one goes oh this is, no banter it's another prank um, uh, the pig well tim is yeah. gonna try and push over the table like <laughs> okay. barrel it over yeah okay I'm gonna uh, storm in because Tim told us to come okay. in after. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, quick um, check. Are we here to kill or kidnap or I've forgotten what we're actually doing with steal something Destiny. from him? I think was what Amelia told us. You're from trying the to. Cardinal. No. You're. Tr- oh, are you talking overall? Yeah. You're gonna rob the cardinal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, make me a strength check. Uh, a pig is plus one. Okay. Um, to try and tip over the table. That's a nine. I'm going to say that doesn't do it. Uh, the pig runs into the table and goes <laughs> and bounces off, continuing to yeah. squeal. I think I see in the this. Air now. I think I see this and I go over and I like push over the table because <laughs> I want to help Tim. Wow. She Tim oh, told no. Tim told us when we came in we'd know. And so I saw Tim trying to push over the table and so I go over and push over. Yeah, the fair table. enough. Logical. Um the so 
beforehand the paladins <laughs> seemed convinced that uh, this was a prank being played on them by other elite paladins. Uh, now you've come in and tipped <laughs> over the table, clearly in the armor of a lesser paladin. Um, and they're like, what are you doing up here? Um, and you hear another one be like, it's a fresher raid, get them! And uh, these paladins are going to try and grab hold of you, I think. Um, Tim is going to get up and start running <laughs> round the room. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, one of them's going to try and grab you. Why not? Uh, uh-oh. Uh, make me a dex check, please, to try and avoid this. Or strength that's... athletics, actually. That's a... Uh... So your strength would be plus one. That's a ten. Uh, that is not enough. One of the paladins rugby tackles you uh, and sort of picks you up and goes, got the pig! Uh, you have been grappled, so you need to succeed on an opposed strength athletics check to break free um, when, like, on your next turn. Should we roll initiative for this? This kind of feels like initiative time, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. We'll do this quickly. All right. Everyone roll me initiative, please. That's hey, uh, a five. Eleven. Okay. 14. 16. Missed. Yes. What are you doing? How many of them did you say were in the room? Four paladins and the man. Four pals uh, and the man. So there are three paladins getting up, getting ready to be like, oh, let's have a scrap. Um, and one paladin holding a pig and roaring. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so in this room, there was a table that I've just knocked over. Chairs. What else is mm. in this room? A couple of bunk beds. Okay. This is a this is a, a small sort of barracks for these elite guards. I'd like to try and grab Tim the Goblin out of that man's hands and jump onto the top bunk of a bunk bed. Okay, all right. Um, make me strength athletics check, please. Oh, I mean, you laugh, but I only rolled an eight. I rolled a one. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, is, it is as if the pig had been greased. So to be honest with you, he'd almost lost control of the pig as it was uh, when you sort of came over. So it's more like instead of wrestling the pig from his arms, you pluck it, uh, sling the pig over your shoulder and bounce up uh, cat-like onto the top bunk of one of these bunk beds. Cool. There you go. Fizz. Huh, okay. Um, <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is a situation. It right. really is. I okay. I'm just gonna stride forward and just sort of like stare around the room and just get redder in the face and more angry. And then when I can notice like a sort of slight lull in the noise, I would just like to scream in Scipio's voice, "What the hell is going on in here?" Cool. All right. Um... We will call that another performance check, please. Okay. Or you can have intimidation, if that's... They are both plus zero. <laughs> um, that is a two, so... Oh, <laughs> <sighs> that ain't going to cut it. More boss. Um, can I go up to Justinian the Wise? Justinian the Wise is not in this room. This oh, is Justinian mean... the Wise's secretary. Oh, sorry. Mean Justinian the Doric, because that's me. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Can I go up to the secretary? Mm -hmm. And I'd like to... I have quite high religion or religious knowledge. Yep. So I'd like to say something in their ear that will make them follow me out of the room. So it's like, there's a problem with the statue of some deity that they really care about. Insert name of deity here. Okay. Uh, yes. Um... That is fine. Uh, you can say that there is a, a problem with the the flow to the the eternal flame. Basically, obviously, in the, uh, the cathedral of the the silver flame, they have a, a large flame burning in the main hall at all times. Um, this is, you know, completely famous, and no one is entirely sure how it works. Um, Many, many people obviously believe that this is divine. A lot of other people believe that there is some form of mech work there that will that just keeps give, feeding it fuel, basically. Um, this is indeed a very serious business. Um, so, yeah, make me a charisma persuasion check, please. That is a 16. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't get to do it. Yes, uh, it works. He goes grey and goes, heaven for fact. Um, that's not what he sounds like. It's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he, he grabs hold of his shoulder and goes, quick, we must do something about this. Uh, yes, that's yes. It's it's important. Anyway, just follow me. Is he being played by Alan Partridge? <laughs> <laughs> Felt like a traction engine. Uh, okay, so it's liquid religion. <laughs> paladins. Uh, one of the paladins uh, is going to try and punch more boss in the face, but misses. Um, <laughs> And the other one, damn it, um, was going to try and sort of reach up and grab the pig back, uh, but unfortunately misses. Uh, so that's the two of them. Um, okay, it is ah, now the turn of the secretary. Yeah, he bustles from the room with you, more boss. You're now both out of there. Uh, so Tim the Goblin, you are in a room with four paladins who think that this is a fun, like, dorm prank but are also livid that it's being pulled on them by people that are of lower rank than they are. Mm. I guess, because... Um, oh, and this... you are a pig, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more item. And you are a horrible uh... goose. <laughs> Quick question for Tim. Uh, are you still wearing the armour? Because it was like child size, right? So does it fit uh, a pig? He took it off. He took it off. Oh, of course, folded it up. He neatly off. folded it. Right. Um, seeing as Mist is holding me now, mm-hmm. uh, I'm gonna like wriggle. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna wriggle in her arms, and then attempt to like, sh- yeah, shoot out of her arms and run away again. We're okay. on the top bunk, so you're gonna like jump down. You fine with that? Um, I just don't want to take too much damage and turn back into a goblin. That's a thing. Well, Can I, like, just make sure I land on the bed? Yeah. Um, i tell you what. Climb uh, down the ladder as a pig. <laughs> um, let's... Why don't you make me a strength athletics check to try and launch yourself in pig form off the bed and land on the lower bank, a bunk of another bed across the way. Yeah. Um, that is a nine. <laughs> yeah, you, roll, rolling terribly. You land, um, you land at a really awkward angle on the mattress. You kind of catch it in your chest, and your front trotter is kind of going like, Bleh! and it bounces you quite firmly back off, and um, you crash into the already turned over table. Um, you uh, you don't take any damage. It just like your dignity is hurt. And you are prone. I mean, yeah. T- Tim has a quiet dignity. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yes. That'll do it. Um, you get tackled again by another no. paladin. I'm afraid. Another paladin sort of grabs hold of you and it's like, ah, <laughs> piggy. But I'm all um, slipped up with wine. I bet he rolled a 19. Um, duh, 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 duh. Miss, we're back round to you. I'd like to jump off the bed and grab Tim the Goblin again. Okay. And try and run out of the room with him under my arms. Okay, yeah, sure. It's like a game of rugby. Um, okay, that was athletics. Uh, that's a 17 this time. A 12 from oh, no. me. Yeah, it was athletics. Yeah. So, yes, you grab hold of. of Tim the Goblin Pig, or Pig Tim the Goblin, or yeah, anyway. uh, yeah. And are you running out of the room? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Tim's uh, still squealing. <laughs> amazing. Um, Fizz. Uh, have more boss than the person that we're actually here for left the room? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna leave the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, more boss. Uh, the there was a paladin that kind of tried to punch me right yep are there any candles in the room uh yes 
Can I use Fermatogy to just make them all, like, spurt flames like a pyrotechnic rock concert, just to basically mess with them as I leave the room? Yes. Good. That is fine. I do. So they all kind of go like, oh! Um, cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's... Hmm. You hear one of them. Uh, it kind of shields himself and then sort of looks as you go out of the room and goes... Was that, was that Captain Scipio just then? And just the very mention of his name makes him like go, "Oh God!" Um, <laughs> like, uh, who is? Is anyone still in the room? Everyone's left the room now, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. As you Where's sort of. Where's Amelia, by the way? Oh, uh, she's outside having a cheroot. <laughs> she's, having... she's helped herself to us a... actually. Yeah, you know, the, the minute the table went over, she just went and picked up, picked up a fine cigar that was on the go. Yeah. And she kind of, like, poured herself some wine. Uh, and as you leave the room, she's actually outside leaning on a wall, and she goes, I thought you had that. <laughs> uh, and you leave to the sound of four paladins very quickly and sheepishly trying to put their room back in order because they assumed they're for the high jump as soon as the captain hears that they were gambling and drinking and that they had a live pig in the room. When I, when I left the room, I slammed the door. Oh, that will have done it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the, the secretary turns to him and goes, tell me, what is the problem? Is the flame guttering? Is it holding for now? Have people noticed? Uh, it's it's something we uh, we need to discuss with Justinian directly. Well, what do you... What do you mean? He doesn't know how the mech work works. Uh, I can't explain to you your, but you know, your nothing. I need to talk <laughs> to someone in charge. How very dare you? Look at your armor. You're just a lowly normal I'm paladin. I'm nothing as well. I'm the personal secretary. To well, then how? Why are you condescending to me? Uh, if there's something wrong with the flame, that's that's something for the engineers to sort out. We don't bother the cardinal with this kind of thing. Uh, I... was... Oh, okay. Sorry, I was going to say Morboss is going to try and be convincing and just lean in and be like, from nothing to nothing, I'm telling you that this needs to go to the top. <laughs> okay, make me a persuasion check. That is 17. <laughs> that is not 17. <laughs> if this turns out to be nothing, I'm going to have your head. You won't be... <laughs> no, I will. I will have it. That's actually, I will. I will. Um, the, last, the last person who tried ended up eaten by a dinosaur. I put Scipio's hand on Morboss's shoulder and say, "I can personally vouch for this man. Now get us to Justinian." Well, Scipio, I want a, I want a written report saying that you vouched for him, because it, the cardinal gets very upset if I bring him anything. Why do you think I don't go downstairs and hear petitioners? Yes, you'll get a written report, and I'm sure it will include all of those beverages and gambling you were doing. Oh, I'm having a very bad day. <laughs> um, uh, I imagine this in, throughout this entire conversation, you just hear... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, what are you doing with the pig? Uh, well, well, what are you as a pig doing? And, Mist, what are you doing about the pig? Well, I'm just holding him in my arms. So, unless Tim does anything crazy, I'm just literally holding, like, a pig under my arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So, is the pig anything to do with this? Of course, the pig is something to do with it. Now go! <laughs> <laughs> I really am having a very bad day. Uh, he takes you over to um, a door. <laughs> he bustles over slightly unsteady on his feet to. Um, and uh, like a just a section of the wall uh which has an ornate sort of looking keyhole in it and he reaches inside of his his robe and he pulls out on a very long chain uh, a very large heavy key and he inserts it and turns it and he kind of goes he pulls it for a second and goes i hate my job and he pushes the door and uh, even though it is it is stone it's clearly on some very clever sort of piston mechanism that allows him to push it open. And there reveals um, a staircase uh, that again sort of proceeds up um, and into the private quarters uh, of Justinian the Wise. Um, he, you emerge um, through sort of a, 
a concealed door in in the wall um into a small parlor and he says i i insist that you all wait here until i've told the cardinal that they've got visitors and and a pig throughout this him saying that tim's gonna start squealing even louder oh <laughs> stop 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 it stop it um and then he winces realizing it's too late as you hear a booming voice from another room go coffrey <laughs> he goes oh coming uh, at this he, point tim stops squealing he looks at the pig being like why why did you have to do it um and uh he he bustles off and you start hearing him speak very slowly be like that is a and you hear oh, no, 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 coming I... in response sorry could i before you do that yeah would you allow me to cast message on him as he goes up the stairs um on the, on the secretary sorry. yeah now that i've heard justinian's voice i can mimic it um so I would like to cast message on him and shout, I don't need you, I need them. Now leave and leave me with them. Okay. I make the secretary go away. <laughs> so before he's left the room. If that's okay. Yes, that's very clever in fairness. You can have inspiration for that one, actually. Thank you very much. Um, he goes, uh, 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 go on it's- then. Tim starts squealing again. Oh. <laughs> Very loudly. Get out of my sight. You're horrible. I try and exchange like a knowing look, nothing to nothing with him. And then as soon as Morboss looks away, he just looks utterly disgusted that he had to interact with <laughs> such a pitiful being. Um, okay. Uh, so I, I will say that, well, Fizz knows exactly what's going on. All you heard was, Coffrey, Coffrey, get in here. And then he turned and stopped and went, go on. <laughs> and he left. Um, yeah, but anyway. Shut the door behind him. <laughs> he does. Stop squealing now. Okay. So, um, presum- excuse me. Presumably following um, Fizz's lead, you start to proceed through into a grand office. Um, Amelia, on the other hand, uh, is standing around in the parlour almost like practically salivating and she reaches under her paladin robe and starts to unroll uh, from a tiny tiny square um of fabric she starts to unfold it and pretty soon you realize it is some form of sack like a loot bag that as she unfolds it gets larger and larger and larger and then she cracks her knuckles and it's like okay she's clearly just get, like she's just getting started with robbing this guy blind. Mm. Um, But anyway, um, more importantly, you emerge into a very, very grand chamber. Um, Quick thing. um, Before they go up, Mm. Tim is going to turn back into a goblin, uh, wriggle out of um, Mist's arms, and go up to Amelia and be like... Can I help you with your giant sack? <laughs> she, she's like, go on then, Tim. You carry on unfolding that. I'm going to steal some stuff. And uh, she starts going around the room um, and just sorting valuables because uh, you know there are there are opulent candlesticks and all sorts here, um, and just even even like a discarded coffee cup is probably worth several years' wages to a normal person. So she she cannot miss. She is she starts to bring items over to be placed into the loot the loot bag. Um, so if you're doing that, the others will emerge into a, a very grand chamber. There is a roaring fire in a fireplace. Um, there's like sort of there's a whole dining area. It's basically it's like the size of a, a studio flat, but it's just one of several rooms. Um, and you see Justinian the Wise, who was a kind of He's sorry, like he's he's sort of very uh, lean uh, and very tall man. Um, he looks like an angry broom, you know. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? In that kind of very like austere, 
but you're not quite sure how their physiology is a thing sort of way. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like, the, no. like the food critic from Ratatouille. Yes. Yeah. That's huh. the vibe. And uh, Jacob Reese Mogg. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh, as, he, as you enter the room, he doesn't even look up from the book he's reading. He's like, Wilbur, what is the meaning of this? You know full well I do not like to be disturbed. How dare you enter my chambers uninvited? Um, she, he said it was okay. Who said it was okay? Your secretary. Coffrey? That one, yeah. <laughs> he says what I tell him to say. He thinks what I tell him to think. Now, what is the meaning of this intrusion? Uh, I'm going to cast message on anyone who will hear it and just say, can anyone remember why we're here? <laughs> and I turn around and go to rob him. You say that out loud? Yeah. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what, oh, what you're doing. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> he, um... <laughs> He st- he stands up and he goes over to the above the fireplace, and he takes down uh, a very fine looking rapier, and he draws it. And says, "If you're here to kill me, know that you are making the greatest mistake of your soon to be ended lives. You'll never make it out of here alive, you know." No, we're here to rob you. <laughs> Who sent you? Which cardinal? Which coward did this? Um, I stand forward boldly, still in my Scipio design, uh, disguise rather, and say, It was I, Justinian. Who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? (laughs) I'm... I'm Justinian the Wise. Well, I'm Captain Scipio. And I've come here to take what's rightfully mine. Remember my name. That's Captain Scipio. I, I... can spell it for you if you need me to. <laughs> I'd like to he... cast Bardic Inspiration on okay. Captain Scipio. <laughs> okay. Go, 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 Captain Scipio. <laughs> <laughs> What does that do? Is that a D4? Uh, I'll double check now. Talk amongst yourselves while uh, I check that. Yeah. <laughs> while that's happening, more boss would also like in on this. And he says, uh, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> no. I knew you deserved to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, and then what are you doing? Um, I how intimidating is he? So he's quite lean. He has a rapier. He, that doesn't. That's probably not physically intimidating. He's got presence, but it's no. It it is not in. Uh, he doesn't seem like a, a a a particularly formidable combatant. Did you say he got down the rapier from above the fireplace? Yes. Can I use formatogy to make the fireplace explode? So basically, the flames shoot out of the fireplace and try and uh, cover him with flame. Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, that just like, that just happens. So it cool. Looks like I get a D six, by the way, ladies. Yeah, I was just about to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your spell suit DC? Your spell suit DC is nine, you isn't can it? Use that whenever you like, by the way. Uh, yeah. For ten minutes. Uh, yes, nine. Dick. My God, I rolled a two. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he seems incandescent with rage, and then he is incandescent with being on fire <laughs> because. <laughs> The a gout of flame just woof, rockets out of the uh, the fireplace, and he goes ah, oh! and his robe uh, catches fire, um, and he is desperately trying to shrug it off. He uh, drops I, his rapier, in fact, I, and is kind of trying to peel off his clothes. I stroll forward menacingly, and I said, "The holy fire has judged you, and it has deemed you unworthy, Justinian." Is there any water or anything like that in the room? Any liquid? <laughs> yeah, there's probably like a decanter of wine or something somewhere. 
I'm going to throw the wine on him, trying to sting, oh, extinguish alcohol. things. Yeah, yeah, the alcohol. <laughs> yeah, the alcohol. I didn't say it was a smart idea, but that's what <laughs> Miss does. I'll tell you what. Yeah, grab. Just roll me a d20 and don't roll a one. <laughs> okay. That's a 14. Okay, fine. You grab uh, a, a, a liquid that is not sufficiently alcoholic to, um, to make him more on fire. Um, are you trying to put him out then? Yes. Okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, he, you just about managed to put out the fire. Like, he's he's smouldering and he peels off his robe. Wait, uh, so is he now nude and unarmed? <laughs> he's, not, <laughs> he's not nude, but he's definitely in his smalls. And he is unarmed. And sure enough, the fight seems to have gone out of him. It's like, you're all cowards. Take what you want and leave. Thanks. What did we want? To rob me. How, no. you, how did you get up here? You seem very bad at this. <laughs> it was my grand design. I, Captain Scipio, remember the name. <laughs> yeah, yes, all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have you killed. Can yes, I'm sure you will. <laughs> if have you all of you. It. <laughs> so, but if you, if that exchange takes place and the Captain Scipio is like, remember the name, Captain Scipio, Morboss begins uh, saying like, yes, and I'm more, and then, Justinian replies with, we'll have you killed. And he goes, more Fred the Great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, more I, I Fred the have, Great. I couldn't have done it uh, uh, without my, my henchman, more Fred the Great, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he, he stands sort of there and pulls himself up to his full height uh, and manages to regain some of his presence, even though he is, you know... Um, he is defenceless and indeed mostly uh, disrobed. He says, mark my words well. The church will not forget this. And before this day is out, it'll send you all straight to hell. Um, and then he just goes and sits in an armchair. I draw, <laughs> I draw Scipio's illusion sword, disguise sword, whatever it is, whatever mm -hmm. weapon it, I'm pretending to have. Yep. Um, and I sort of like hold it aloft sort of near him, not like still across the desk. So he can't really see it properly. Okay. But, like, threatening him. Um, and I say, you have one last chance to redeem yourself in my eyes, coward, as you stand in your pants, telling me to be scared of the church. Tell me you must have some kind of escape mechanism in this palace of yours. <sighs> He's, He's bored of you. Well, he's not bored of you, but he's just like ugh, the theatrics. He he reaches <laughs> behind. Um, he reaches through a bookcase and kind of goes clonk, and you hear an answering. Clonk, clonk, um, and there indeed is a, a hidden staircase. Could goes, I? Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. No. Oh, could I um, look around the room to see if there's any interesting trinkets? So, like, not anything of like special worth or anything but anything just that would be like in interesting or magical or or like just a bit different yes um there is uh an hourglass that you can't seem to peel your eyes away from uh you're not entirely sure what it does but um yeah you uh you're drawn to it you're like i want that i'd like to take that with me all right you put it in you, you take it basically um uh, Morboss has so he has quite good knowledge of religion and history and so on. Mm -hmm. um, can I? I don't. I assume there's like a bookcase full of various texts. Can I yes. identify, let's say, five of the most prominent, valuable texts? Yes. Um, uh, it's it's not hard uh, because um, there are five volumes of Justinian the Wise's own writings written in his hand Fantastic. these are the true first editions i throw them straight on the fire <laughs> <laughs> because i just this guy's just been so rude and unpleasant and now it seems like the fun's gone out of it so more boss is just looking for kicks so he just wow. chucks it straight Whoa. on the fire Whoa. just okay, really yeah. wants to discredit this guy he's in his pants he's sat down his books are burning yeah um he in defiance having pulled that lever has gone back to reading the book he was originally reading uh, but as you look you can see his jaw is clenched 
uh, he is not actually moving his eyes on the page. He's just staring disconsolately at the words in front of him and struggling not to shake with righteous fury. Can I take that book out of his hands and throw it straight on the fire afterwards? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. <laughs> he, um, he, he just looks, at this point, he just looks down at his hands. It's like, oh. uh, at this point, I imagine Tim is waddling up the stairs, mm-hmm. holding armfuls of, like, golden jugs and, like, bowls and... Yep. Uh, a particularly nice porcelain doll you found. Oh, yeah. Mm. Um, um, yes. Yeah, uh, and he's dressed in like jewelry and like a really <laughs> oversized shirt. Uh, this is incredible. He's got a little crown on top of his head. Yeah, oh he's, he's holding stuff, but the sleeves carry on over his wrists and like almost down to his feet, <laughs> sort yeah, of wandering exactly. around. This place is full of such nice things. Um, Amelia follows behind with um, the sack, which is comically large. Like it is like it's the the diameter of the ball of loot in it is almost as tall as almost as, as, as wide as she is tall. But she is carrying it without any sign of struggle whatsoever. Does it have it's a like, big gold piece sign on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, she goes, I found the old man safe. We've cleaned him out. Yes, and we have found the exit. Now let us go. Follow me. Scipio, that is. Are you ever going to drop this one? Just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Amelia uh, stands ready by the door to, to sort of follow you out. Yeah. Huh? I think more boss chucks one last book on the fire <laughs> as he exits the exits the room he's just like remember the name more fred the great and Scipio. that's more yeah. fred m-o-r-f-r-e-d <laughs> okay tim is gonna walk past the man and he's gonna look at him and say thank you for all these lovely things <laughs> <laughs> um all right, you start to carry on down the um, the staircase, um, and then as you start to get down toward the final sort of third of it, um, a gust starts to uh, sort of um, come up, uh, and you realise that it's you can feel the wind from outside, and then you start to hear sort of a lot of clanking noises and. Uh, the bustle of industry and sure enough as you reach the bottom of this staircase and you go through uh, the doorway you emerge onto a private platform uh, very high up in the hangar where a um, a private zeppelin uh, with the cardinal's livery on it awaits and Amelia goes that is a nice zeppelin um and yeah it she immediately scrabbles forward and starts to load all of the stuff onto it onto it uh can everyone make me a notice check please sorry a wisdom perception check eight three minus Uh, one two that's five wow one 21 um you sort of casually look over the platform you're like oh there's amelia's ship and eric um and indeed, not too far away, by happenstance, sort of a little bit further down, uh, let's call it about f- sort of 40 foot down, uh, is uh, Amelia Zeppelin. And Eric is, is at this point, uh, sat on a lounge chair um, with a, <laughs> just a growing collection of empty bottles, just sort of having a lovely time and catching some fresh air. Um, yeah, we can do. Uh, I would like to cast message on mm-hmm. Eric and say, it's time to cheese it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you allowing Eric to reply? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, slightly slurred. You hear about capital. I'll start the airship. <laughs> um, <laughs> Come dig me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's, uh, it, yeah. Um, Indeed, as Amelia is making her pre-flight checks and, and spinning up uh, the Zeppelin, you see uh, similar checks being performed on Amelia's vessel. Um, and indeed, if you all sort of get on board together, 
um, that both start to bob up just as um, a whole host of paladins run down <laughs> the stairs behind you and emerge onto the platform and are basically left shaking their fists <laughs> at you as you drift yeah. away and turn yeah. and start to glide off. Um, um, just as I'm going, can I just like cast one more <coughs> minor illusion? Uh-huh. Uh, there's some graffiti on one of the bits of wall that says Scipio was here. <laughs> His career is in ruins. <laughs> um, okay. Oh no! I turn around to everyone else and go, um, we forgot about the wine in the quartermaster's office. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, don't worry about it. I'm sure he'll get his lovely present that we obviously came here to do. <laughs> uh, OK, so um, Amelia is uh, sort of manoeuvring the Zeppelin and she sends a flag. She sort of starts pulling on some levers, which send signal flags out from her little gondola. And she messages to Eric, follow close um, and, you know, danger near. Um, and so... The manoeuvre she sort of does as she comes out of the, the port, because obviously if you were to go straight out, you'd be right back in the firing line of those those guns. Instead, she turns immediately right and hugs the wall of the spire and in a few sort of circles manages to take both of you up and up, uh, both of the ships rather, up and up, until it's, you know, you're fairly certain you can sort of sail away from both of them. Um and indeed, you sort of you remember the sort of range you had to stop at for the initial inspection. And there's a a pause. Where you're like, are they gonna? Are they gonna? And they don't. And everyone breathes a sigh of relief. And that's when the other klaxon goes off. <laughs> this one is a different kind of blat. The previous one was like, Bleh. this one is just. It's not so much of a blat, it's more of a boom. You just hear, boom. You're like, that's, what kind of signal is that? That's a weird signal noise. Uh, and um, everyone sort of gathers on the rail and looks through the windows. And um, you sort of watch uh, the cathedral as it dwindles in the distance. And you realize that wasn't in any way, shape or form an alarm noise. It was the sound of machinery. And whereas before you saw two spires rotate and become guns, at this point, pretty much the whole top of the cathedral just gimbals. Goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh! And it starts to, uh, it's pointed directly at you. Um, oh. The air around you starts to vibrate and a strange sort of purple energy seems to start to coalesce in the air around the church, the Cathedral of the Silver Flame, um, which builds into a kind of noise. And then there's a, a brief moment of silence. And just as Amelia goes, then this enormous cannon just goes, and you are engulfed in this stream of purple energy. It doesn't shatter the windows of the gondola, but it is nonetheless streaming through um, the windows and hitting you and streaming through you everything around you starts to to just vibrate constantly um, and then uh, two things happen the cathedral in front of you seems to be phasing out of existence almost and behind you you become aware of this horrible gaping darkness uh, a darkness which encroaches around the corners of your vision and then encloses perfectly. Uh, and there is a horrible lurching moment of silence where you feel yourself weightless. And then all is noise and all is clamour uh, as alarm bells are going off. Uh, you can feel the gondola swinging wildly as it sort of almost breaks free of the balloon. Uh, you are going down um, and everything is bathed in... Uh, this constant steady orange light and suddenly the temperature around you is considerably greater than it was before and you smash into the ground um, and when you pick yourselves up you sort of shake yourselves off incredibly you're all still okay you're not sure where Eric Zeppelin went down 
but you look out of the windows and um i don't know how religious everyone is but it certainly looks like you're in hell yeah <laughs> finally i'm home <laughs> <laughs> little boy you're going to hell <laughs> so that i believe concludes our adventures in eberron uh and we shall be moving if it wasn't clear enough into avernus for the next Yay. run of dungeon breaker so um have fun with that um you may have left him in his pants but he was true to his word um <laughs> The Church of the Silver Flame has sent you to hell. <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, I never so, yeah. thought Tim would be sent to hell. <laughs> I know, he's the purest one. How will he survive? We'll find out next time. Um, so, yeah, thanks for to everyone for for playing. I don't know how we're going to tell Sarah about this. <laughs> like, hey, mate, don't worry, Eric's fine. However, but... Um, yeah, thanks so much for, for playing, everyone, and everyone at home for watching. Uh, we will return soon with more adventures, um, this time in hell. Uh, so, yeah, uh, all that remains to be said is please watch other videos from us and make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell icon. Thanks again for watching. Thanks to everyone for playing. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you, Johnny. And Thank I hope, you. I hope everyone has a bloody lovely day. Oh, Lord. Yeah! What a day. <laughs> <laughs> And with that, season one of Dungeon Breaker comes to its dramatic conclusion. Who'd ever have thought that Tim the Goblin would end up in hell? Will we come across any of Morbus's associates? And will Eric and the gang reunite? Our season break will see the Dice Breaker team playing a different RPG for a few weeks before Dungeon Breaker returns for season two, set in Avernus. If you'd like to make sure you don't miss out on those upcoming Dungeon Breaker episodes, or any of our other RPG and tabletop content for that matter, Hit that subscribe button so we can keep you in the loop.